Okay, today I'm going to talk about the Precision Power Power Class amplifiers. Um, I did a video on this previously, but it got um, it got deleted somehow, so I'm doing another one. But that's okay because I had more to add to it that I think uh, make make hopefully a more interesting video, and I'm using a better camera this time, so hopefully it turns out even better than the first one. Um, what I have here is the uh, sales brochure from 97 when these came out and it's a uh, it's just a fold out it's not like real big or anything but it just talks about the new power class amplifiers shows a 1400 there with the Cubase remote And we, you know, so it runs down the line of all the different models that came out. Right here, this is one I don't have, and you don't see them very often. It's a PC or Pro 650, and basically it was a uh, PC 650 with the, um, I think it's the FRX 4, 450 years. I, I don't know. It's a um, processor that they had a, a crossover. Uh, it's FRX 456. Actually, they show it on the other page here, but I'll get to it. Um, There's a 4100. And then they have the uh, a shot of the internals. Right there. Of a, a 20, that's a PC 2350. And then uh, that's the internals of a, the 2150, which was... I don't know, one of, maybe not the most popular, maybe some of the cheaper, smaller ones sold more, but this was uh, a pretty pretty uh, sought-after model. Um, they show, um, on the last page here, they show all the different uh, accessories, like the spacers, all the processors. Uh, a lot of these processors existed um, during the art series, but they were uh, redone for... Uh, the you know just in the the charcoal gray paint for 97 and then on uh the back page of that they have a ad for the um the uh, power class pro flat pistons and then um down here is the power class the those are the 15s that i have right there and then I do have uh, 12 of the uh, two. I actually have two, but one of them, one of them blue. Then on the back is just all the specs for all the different amplifiers. All right, so um, I just thought people would find that interesting. Those are kind of hard to come by, so I uh, figured I'd show it for people that haven't seen it before. Um, that also came with when I bought that it came with them um, they have like t-shirts and mugs and um, this watch which came for sale recently but it went for more money than I was willing to spend <laughs> on it but it's pretty sweet it's got for the uh, 12 o'clock 6 o'clock 3 and um, 9 it's got the uh, PPI lightning bolt um, and then just a very 90s collection of clothing yeah, look at this jacket with the, the purple sleeves. Sweet. But those mugs would be sweet to have. I'm sure those go for big dollars now, too. Alright, so... Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that the uh, PC2350 is my sub-amp. I have two more of them here that... Uh, one of them's not working though. It uh, and that you think you can see that I, I did a gut shot of it when I showed the guts of the ZR1000 and then this amp. Um, and the next one down with the um, this sticker here came with every um, PC amp, and you'll see a lot of them placed there or in the middle. Um, but it came with every amp in the box, um, so you'll see them quite often on eBay with that sticker applied and somewhere on them. Um, so it seems like that end is always where you see it. Um, and then uh, the rare one, well, fairly rare. This one's super rare, but I'll get to that. Um, it's 1400, and then a 2150, 
one of the more popular models. And then a PC250 and a PCSP. And then down here I have a DEQ230. I also have another processor. The um, uh, PSC221. Um, it's a uh, phase shift controller. And um, now what, from my understanding, what that is... Is um, I don't know for for those that don't know, uh, I don't know. I've heard phase shift used in different ways. Um, I know that uh, sometimes you can you can switch a sub amp or on a deck. Like all the Eclipse decks, have, well, at least the ones I've run have an option to switch the phase of your subs. Now, what that does, like 180 degrees, is it switches the timing that the um, the signal goes to the speaker, and therefore. When the, that sound hits your ear, and it'll um, just alter it enough from your interiors that it's what it's supposed to do is um, so they don't cancel each other out. Um, I have never really noticed too much of a difference on uh, when I when I've used that option on the deck, but this unit, what what you can do is hook it up to a two channel or four channel that's hooked to your interiors, and you know, you, you dial them both to like zero and then, you know, of course the speak, if you're in the driver, the passenger side speaker is further away than the one that's in your door or a kick panel or pillar. So the sound isn't quite right. It's not centered. So what you can do with this is adjust it and basically make the illusion of either bringing the far speaker closer or more, I think would be more desirable, is to move the sound of the speaker closest to you as far away as um, <clears throat> the, 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 the far speaker or the passenger side. Um, I've, I mean, I've talked to people that have used it and they said fantastic things about it. I think another thing in the manual for it is that supposedly you were able to use it to like, um, make the illusion that your subs are closer which was kind of what intrigued me because having a suburban my subs are pretty far away and you know bass they say is like non-directional but you can definitely tell that the sound's coming from like way back there so um i mean not totally but it's it's more apparent than if you're in a car so i would think maybe maybe i want to try that out sometime and see if that doesn't work um <clears throat> but anyway uh the 2350 is uh, its claim to fame is having the uh, the world record 97 with Alan Gates' Bronco and in the then that um, you might have noticed in that brochure I think it had it at 164 but this was this um, brochure yeah 164.9 was done in um, 97. I think that was the year that she actually, um, so I think she said it again, so I think it was different. So maybe, maybe that one, 173, maybe I was way off, but I, I feel like she had something higher than 164, but I'm not positive. I'll have to look more into that, um, do it on a future video. But anyway, um, let's look at the internals I, I've shown in the other video, the 2350, but this 4100 is a plexi bottom, which was an option on all the amplifiers and I believe I believe it was a $75 option but it may have been it may have been more than that it might have been 90 but you can see here they did an awesome job on this screen printing the plexiglass um, the back plate usually clamps down the FETs so they had to replace they had to do something uh, to replace that so what they did was they put these um, I think they're stainless, but they could be aluminum, but I, I think, I, I don't know, they really look like stainless to me. Um, but that's these on each side, and then put some really nice, what I what looks to be um, stainless uh, socket head cap screws through. Um, but, now I'll try to go over this. Um, I know um, Vintage Stereo Buff was watching my videos, and he's like, man, I can't, I can't see the inside of those amps, so... I'm going to try to run 
a video through something, stabilize it, because I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of shaky when I'm holding it. I don't have a tripod, so I'm going to look into getting that, but I'll see if I can't go down the amplifier and get a, get a closer shot that's not all shaky. So I'll tap that here. There's the, the forced air cooling. And I can kind of show you an example with the spacer of how that was supposed to work. And this one I can't get too close because it really gets a glare um, going with this camera. So it's kind of you kind of have to see one in person, but really beautiful amplifiers. This one has only three of these solid copper buses that I'll show you another amp in a minute here that has a um a lot more of them and the PC2350 has uh a few that are a lot larger but this 4100 is uh it's my favorite four channel amp that I've ever used I've used a, a bunch but I like this one I prefer it over all the rest of them but yeah there's a couple small ones there and there <clears throat> but anyway trying to take a shot further out and then uh, I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to do another one for just a part two.